In this video, I'm going to show you how I created the blog for Inbox Zero. It's fully open source, so you can see all the code behind it. And I used Sanity to create it. So let's get into it. This is what the blog looks like. And then over here, if I click in, you can see the article, um, sticky contents on the side over here. And this is the blog and a bit of a read more section at the bottom. So, you know, I wouldn't really recommend always creating your own blog, but at the same time, it, if you do, then it's free and you can um, optimize it and change it as you want. So I wanted the full control, so I didn't mind spending a little bit of time creating it myself. It didn't take a whole lot of time. <coughs> I'm using Sanity for it. Um, I think they could do a slightly better job for their documentation, but um, in the video, I'm gonna show you how it's all set up and how you can do the same thing. What you'll notice is that you actually deploy Sanity Studio, which is the CMS, um, backend admin area where you can go and create posts and authors and so on. So here's myself as an author. You can see the details around me and so on, my image, and then the posts over here. So here's the posts that I uploaded. Um, and yeah, anyone can just jump in and go and edit this. So the, the huge benefit of this in the past, I had MDX, next MDX for my blog which was cool and simple when only I needed to manage it. But when I ha have team members that I need to bring on board, I don't really want them editing MDX files in GitHub. It was a bit annoying. So I went and set up Sanity. So this is lo what it looks like for them on the back end to go and edit it. Um, they're comfortable editing it with Sanity. And then this is what it looks like on the front end. So let's dive into what this looks like. We're gonna start from the blog homepage where you see all the different posts. That's the easiest place to start. And here you can see it's just blog uh, slash page dot TSX. Um, so it, you know, just sort of rendered and this is what is going to come up. So we're using Sanity Fetch to get all the blog posts. And once we have them, we're just going to load this post component. Now I do still have the old MDX posts here. So it's a mix of the old post and the new post, but, uh, Sanity is a headless CMS. So you can mix and match between them. I can have the old posts here and the new posts. Um, Sanity is basically just a backend providing me data. But if I want to have posts up here as well, uh, hard coded, and you know, stored in the MDX files like I had before, that still works for me. So um, in the future, I'll probably simplify it to just be sanity. There are benefits for me to doing that. Um, but here you can see right now, it's all the blog posts. And also it means you can have an incremental move over like I have done if you're in a similar situation. So without having to move every single post to, to sanity for this to work. So very simple tailwind. Well, I need to stop clicking that. And then over here, you can see post card and it's basically just a grid of these different cards. And here you can see the UI for it, for how it comes out. So very simple. And then when we click into a post, it looks like this. So what that looks like over here, I have this um, post folder within it slug. So this is dynamic. And I do also have fixed uh, blog posts. These are the MDX files that I mentioned before. This is how I used to have it done. Um, but for the new post, basically, if it's got a dynamic slug, it will match this one over here and it will go and basically do sanity fetch again, load up the blog and just display it over here on the front end. And here you can see uh, the UI for it and so on. So jumping back to um, the blog contents page that we saw before, um, we have these utilities, sanity fetches um, one and then uh, post queries with the actual query of what to, to fetch. So let's take a look at sanity fetch. To be honest, I didn't write this file at all. This was just automatically uh, created. I think I took it from another project, so I'll share that. And there was another YouTube video um, that helped me get started with this. So I'm going to share all of that with you. Uh, Sanity client. Also, this is just, I think, uh, set up for me automatically. There's um, an image builder. So I haven't even read these docs, honestly, but it just works for me. And here are the different queries. Now, the queries, they use something called Grok. I guess it's similar to a GraphQL, if you're familiar with that. Um, here you can see like, I actually don't know how Grok works. I haven't even read these. Most of this is just auto-generated. Now when I need to create a new one, um, I just ask the AI to do it. But you can understand roughly how it works. Say I want all the posts of type post. Then I can ask for the different fields that I want. Let's say I want image URL and that's nested. I can go in main image or asset URL. And that's how all the blogs uh, blog posts are. Here you can see uh, a single one, um, current, and let's say the last four, we want to do some logic here. So order date descending zero to four, but I, I didn't write this. So uh, <laughs> it just worked. Uh, the AI understood well enough how to do it. And that was enough. So let's say I want to go and see all the posts that we just had a look at. So that's passed in over here to sanity fetch again. So yeah, that's just an API call. We get all the data. Um, I did have some issues with caching around sanity. So I just left it as really valid 860. So uh, next year's um, it will always return the same blog statically, but if um, 
it's like it hasn't fetched in more than 60 seconds and someone comes to the page, it will return the existing hash of what it has. But after that, it will go and revalidate. One more thing I'll show you is the sitemap. Um, I have static URLs, which I just pasted into the sitemap, but I also have, now that I have lots of Sanity blog posts, um, so I'm basically asking Sanity for all the slugs. So here you can see, just ask for all the slugs. And then um, I'm looping over them and creating a pit like a URL over here, which is what I need. And then it, the sitemap just returns it. Now this is part of Next.js. And here you can see if you go to sitemap.xml, I have um, the sitemap of all the different blog posts here at the bottom from Sanity. And that is helpful for SEO purposes. Google can now, or other search engines can go and look at this sitemap and very easily find the URLs of your website. Now I mentioned Sanity Studio. Um, I have deployed it or it's just running at localhost 3000 but if you go to the deployed website slash studio um, it will also be over there so that's really really cool it's just deployed as part of your project you can also deploy with sanity so it doesn't have to be at slash studio you could um, just deploy to sanity cloud and it worked fine as well sanity is still doing a lot of the work here in terms of the data where it's being stored it's not being stored in one of my databases it's being stored by sanity so i still am reliant on them but in terms of this ui and uh, the studio managing everything this is all local. So let's go take a look at that studio, studio over here. Um, and you can see we're basically just importing uh, next studio. And yeah, you, the whole page is just loaded up from there. You can take a look here. Uh, that's basically everything around studio. So very, very easy. Some more pieces I'll show you. There's a sanity CLI. So here we need to, um, if the next JS um, sanity deployment, we need to have the project ID and the data set is basically production. This is my project ID. And this um, allows us to load the correct sanity studio. Here you have a config. Um, I think this was all automatically generated. I didn't touch it at all. We don't really know too much what's happening here, but you can go, you know, let's say you didn't want base path to be studio, you could change it. And yeah, some other things you can set here. Oh, something I didn't mention yet is schema type. So you can define what your sanity project looks like um, in terms of the fields that are available. So most of this, I just like use default out of the box, but here you can see um, the name is defined for each author and the slug and so on. And this is what will appear in sanity studio and what will be saved in the sanity database as well here you can see uh, this is a field i did add a twitter handle for every author so if i go over here click my name you will see uh, my bio my twitter handle and this so this was actually created by uh, me and the ai went and sort of made this a bit better with uh, validation and a bit of a description but you know just keeping it simple like this also works completely fine and so we have the different uh, schemas. This code I didn't write either. It just sort of was automatically generated. I think when I set up Sanity with the CLI, I just hit the, that I wanted a blog and it went and created uh, the standard types for me. And as I mentioned, the only thing I actually added was Twitter. And so, yeah, if you do want to add like a field like this, basically you'll just like restart the Next.js project that you have running and it will automatically add in this field. And when you deploy it, the same thing, Sanity will know to display that field. Here you have like an end file where you can go and set certain things. It's also automatically generated and a structure file where um, I don't fully know what this does, but yeah, you can see, you know, the structure is a blog. These are the different categories I have. Again, I'm assuming this is, just, this is a general structure that Sanity needs to know. So all of this code, it's part of inbox zero. So you can go and read it and you can copy and paste it yourself. A lot of this was copy and pasted from uh, other places or automatically generated by Sanity. So that's the end of the video about Sanity. This is how it came out. I'm very happy with it as a headless CMS. It does exactly what I need. It provides an API for all the different blog posts and authors and structure and all of that. And it also gives um, marketers and non-technical people the ability to quickly add posts and like to see visually what it all looks like, which is great. Um, and the pricing also is really, really good. I am paying zero forever. Um, well, at least at my current size, I have 20 user seats. I'm not going to hit that anytime soon. Um, two data sets public only. That's completely fine. My blog is public. So it does exactly what I need. And yeah, you should give it a try. Let me know what you think about it.